What's up, everyone? It's your girl, Sam Diane, and this is Figuring Out Epilepsy, where we talk about all things epilepsy plus more. For today's episode, I really wanted to start from the beginning where my epilepsy started and how I got here to start a podcast about epilepsy. So let's go back to the beginning. Back to 11-year-old Sam in 6th grade history class. So for this class, no matter what day it was, we were supposed to start the class off with taking out our composition books, taking out our pencil, and writing down whatever's on the board. Me, being the good little student that I was, I took out my composition book placed it on my desk, took out my pencil, placed it on the desk. And when I went to go reach for the pencil, I couldn't move my arms. They felt like they were 100 pounds each, and I was too weak to pick them up. I started freaking out immediately because a second ago, I was able to move my arms. They were working just fine. Took out my composition and my pencil and, you know, all day I was good. Then all of a sudden, I'm not able to move my arms. That's weird. Then I'm like, okay, I'll just go up and tell my teacher. Shout out to her. Amazing woman. Still see her all the time. Still talk to her. Love her. I go... To my, t- I want to go to my teacher and let her know that I can't move my arms. Like I'm not able to move them. They feel too heavy. But when I try to get up, my legs aren't working. My legs feel like they're 100 pounds each. And I'm not able to physically get up. I'm not f- able to move. My body felt too heavy for me, and I felt way too weak. I had no idea what was going on. I just knew that there was something completely wrong with me, and I started to freak out a little bit more. So I think we're not supposed to yell, but this is an emergency. I'm going to yell out to my teacher for some help. Nope. Nope. I was not able to speak. I was not able to say anything. So I'm right there, paralyzed. I say to the neck down because I'm still able to see everything around me. I'm still able to see my classmates talking to one another, goofing off, writing down in their composition books. I'm still able to see everything. I'm just not able to move or to speak. I start freaking out even more. Tears start to run down my face. And I pray. I pray that someone notices there's something wrong with Sam, that she is not herself. I pray that my teacher notices me, that she come help me, that I'm not just going to sit in my class for 45 minutes And just sit here like a bump on a log. I pray that someone helps me. A few minutes pass by. My teacher comes to me and kneels down at my desk and asks me, Sam, are you okay? Is Is there anything wrong? What can I help you with? I'm still not able to move. I'm still not able to speak. And I just look at her with tears running down my face. At that point, I think she knew there was something seriously wrong with me because she asked all my classmates to leave the room. And a few minutes later, the paramedics come into the classroom. They pick me up from my desk and place me on the floor. That's when the paramedics ask me, what's your name? I'm still not able to speak. So I just look at them. Tears continuing to run down my face. 
They asked me, what's today's date? I still can't speak. Tears flowing down my face. They finally asked me, what's your birthday? Again, I cannot speak. So they put me on the gurney and they wheel me out to the ambulance that's parked in the middle of my school where the basketball courts are. And that's where I meet my mom, who was working at my middle school at the time, and my older brother, who was in eighth grade at the time. This is the first, and I want to say last time I ever saw my older brother cry. I have never seen my older brother cry before. And when I saw him crying with fear in his face, I started to cry even more. I started to freak out even more because I'm like, this is this must be really serious. If my older brother is crying, this must be serious. Something must be terribly wrong with me. And I have no idea what's going on. So the paramedics close the door and we're off to the local hospital. That's where I meet up with my mom and my older brother. My dad and my younger brother eventually come later on. But initially it was just me, my mom, and my older brother. And right at the entrance, the doctor meets me and he begins to ask me, what's your name? At that point, I could speak. At that point, I said, Sam. He was like, okay, good. He asked me, what day is it? I said, whatever day it was. I don't remember the day. And he's like, okay, good. Then he asked me, when's your birthday? I said, March 25th. He's like, okay, good. All right, I'll be back. Just wait here. And so we waited right there. The hospital was filled with people. It was completely full, and I was waiting in the hallway near the entrance with my mom and my older brother. A few hours pass by, and my dad and my younger brother show up. And then we continue to wait. We're still waiting there in the hallway for an answer, trying to figure out what happened to me few hours passed by they finally put me in a room but it wasn't just any regular room it was one of those rooms that had those curtains for walls that's divided that's the the room they put me in I was hooked up to IVs like crazy don't know what was going on what the IVs had I had no idea and you can see the frustration the tiredness the boredom that was going through my family my parents were worried sick nothing like this has ever happened to us so we're just waiting and waiting and waiting for the doctor to come to tell us what happened finally after hours it's already nighttime at this point and the doctor comes and tells us what happened was your daughter had a seizure. I believe they said it was a petite mal seizure. Not 100% sure. But he said that I had a seizure. And I'm going to need to see a neurologist. For the meantime, he prescribed me some medication. But eventually I need to see a neurologist to see if I have epilepsy or not. So we do just as the emergency doctor tells us. I eventually go home with my family. I'm out of school for a few days. I didn't go back to school right away. So I'm out of out of school. And a few days later, my mom takes me to go see a neurologist. The neurologist right away tells us that I have epilepsy. I didn't get an EEG. 
I didn't get it. I didn't get any sort of brain scan automatically, I guess from the report from the hospital, they automatically assume I have epilepsy. So he, immediately he prescribed me, I believe it was Depakote. I believe that was my first medication. But he prescribed me anticonvulsant medication and that's what I start taking. I start taking my medicine. Hopefully it works. And then he wanted to see me in three months. That's the routine, isn't it? Every three months you go see your neurologist. At least that is for me. So during those three month period until I see my neurologist again, I'm just trying to take my medication on time and and deal with this new life changing event. Back in 2021, when the 20 year mark happened, I'm still dealing with epilepsy. I'm still trying to get some sort of medication to work for me. No medicine has been able to help me until now, but we'll get into that another time. So back in 2021, I was six months seizure free. And in the state of California, you are supposed to be six months seizure free or more under the care of a doctor to be able to get your driver's license. Since I turned 16 and I was legally able to get my driver's license, that's all I ever wanted. All I ever tried to work for was getting my driver's license. Because for me, getting your driver's license meant freedom, meant epilepsy didn't beat me. I conquered epilepsy. I'm free. But to this day, I still don't have my driver's license. Back in 2021, I thought, I really thought I was going to get my driver's license. I was telling all my friends, I was telling all my family members that, yeah, I've been six months seizure free. I haven't had any seizures in so long. And I'm going to get my driver's license. My doctor said if I'm six months seizure free, I can get my driver's license. So I go to my neurologist, a different one this time because I'm an adult at this point, and I ask him, can I get my driver's license? He tells me no. He says, Sam, you can't get your driver's license just yet because you still have eye twitches and it wouldn't be safe. My heart sank to my stomach when he told me no. Everything after he said no did not matter. The point was he said no. So when I got home, I hopped on my phone and started texting my dad and my older brother in the group chat. The same older brother that was crying at my first seizure was texting that brother. And I tell him, maybe I'm supposed to have epilepsy, you know? My neurologist told me I can't get my driver's license again. Maybe this is my life. Maybe this is what is supposed to happen to me. Maybe I'm not supposed to be like everyone else and have a driver's license. Maybe I'm not supposed to be like everyone else and live a normal life. There's too many coincidences between me and epilepsy, maybe this is my life. And what I was talking about was the color for epilepsy is purple. That's my favorite color. Purple Day or Epilepsy Awareness Day is March 26th. That's the day after my birthday. With just those two things, I was convinced that I'm supposed to have epilepsy, that epilepsy is my life. And I had the biggest pity party for myself. I felt so defeated because my neurologist told me no. 
you cannot get your driver's license. Rather than my older brother or my dad telling me, oh, once you find a cure, you know, this, you'll be able to get your driver's license. No. Rather than finding a cure for me, my older brother tells me, maybe that's your calling. Maybe figuring out epilepsy is what you're meant to do. And for whatever reason, that, those words, that phrase, figuring out epilepsy, just clicked in my head and I was like, maybe it, I am supposed to do something with this. Maybe I'm seeing my epilepsy in a completely wrong way. Maybe I need to turn my negative into a positive and do something. Now, my older brother was talking about finding a cure for epilepsy, but I suck at science and math. So I'm doing the epilepsy community a favor by not going that route. You're welcome. (laughs) Instead, we did what we know how to do and what we've been doing since we were like 10 years old, and that is writing. So I started a blog called Figuring Out Epilepsy because that phrase right there is what helped me accept my epilepsy. Everyone's journey is different. I don't know why figuring out epilepsy was the reason why I accepted my epilepsy. I have no idea. Still can't figure it out. But it was. So I started a blog about my experience living with epilepsy. And I really wanted to focus on the mental and and emotional aspects of epilepsy because I feel like we don't talk about that part enough. We always talk about the facts. But epilepsy is more than just the facts. Epilepsy can cause so many different side effects, depression, suicidal thoughts, thoughts of self-harm, anxiety, anxiety attacks. I know this because I've dealt with all of those things. So that's what I really wanted to focus on is more of the emotional and mental aspects of it. The feeling of being a burden to your family, the feeling of no one wanting to love you because no one would want to deal with your epilepsy. I wanted to focus on everything that no one wants to talk about the embarrassment of what it's like having a seizure of having accidents of being made fun of of being talked about of someone saying that oh you're not really that sick having to prove how sick you are every single time every time you meet someone new that's what I wanted to focus on and I did I started my blog March 2023, on my birthday. <laughs> but just just like a week ago, my, my blog got deleted. Everything got erased. And I was devastated because I was working on that blog for a year. Since March 2022, I was working on that blog. And it finally launched this year in March. And everything got deleted. What am I supposed to do now? I could start all over, but I was already thinking about starting a podcast on epilepsy. So I figured one door closes, another one opens. This is this was probably my push to start my podcast because for a while I was just lagging on it. I was not working towards it at all until my blog got deleted and I was like, oh, no, I really need to need to start this. So I started, and this is the first episode. However, I do want to give a shout out to Maribel from Embracing My Markings podcast and Rodrigo from Alta Red podcast. You guys have helped me out so, so much in making my dreams possible starting this podcast giving all your tips and tricks you guys are absolutely amazing I also want to give a shout out to Kat Brandon and Edgar 
They all have their own podcasts. I've reached out to every single one of them. And they have also given me tips and tricks on content creating, on podcasting, equipment, all that jazz. So I really want to give a shout out to all you guys because if it wasn't for you and the support of everyone, I would not be here today starting this podcast. So thank you guys so much.